Welcome back to the Bubba Patch. Now, I told you on a few videos ago, we're gonna show you a pumpkin like you've never seen before. Well, I didn't really expect for it to play out this way, but there it is right behind you. That's a Bubba Patch. Join me today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about that. All right, Jackson's out with his father. I'm picking him up at five o'clock. We're gonna go fishing. If he's got enough energy left in him to go fishing after swimming all weekend. And I just wanna to talk to you and tell you a little bit about the pumpkin. We got some new growth growing over here on the plant there. You can see there's a new pumpkin out there. I'll show you in a second. That's gonna be the next pumpkin that we set here. When it opens in eight or nine days, we'll set fruit and I'll show you some others. We also have a little pumpkins developing here. These pumpkins, when you see them like this, Typically, they're going to open in, in about 10 days, 9 or 10 days. There's another one there, and I'm sure we have another one out there. That's my main vine. Well, really, it's a secondary turned into the main vine. It's been a heck of a year. Anyways, but here we go. Here's the jack pumpkin. You know, I just measured this morning. The circumference is 107 inches. It's day 28. We got the bubba patch. It's sealed up. This is water water membrane this is a sheet membrane made by latacrete latacrete that's how you pronounce it sales rep told me latacrete all right this is waterproof and we're going to keep an eye on this when it starts to stretch and pull gets ready to pop i'm going to cut this we're going to apply a new bandage i'm going to try to grow is there a doctor in the house dr bubba is this here to day 40. you may say why bubba why well, I want to save the seeds. This is the ultimate cross. The ultimate cross, a 2,560 pound United States record Maverick. Best shaped pumpkin I've ever grown. I say bar none. Look how tall it is, long it is. The only thing I see problem is it does have a short stem. But we bred this into the wolf, the 2,493 pound wolf, a big orange daddy. So those genetics, the orange should breed over into this fruit. And also the big thick, the 2493 wolf was super thick, super heavy. It will thicken up this blossom end. About a 90% chance it'll thicken up that blossom, blossom end. I see right here it's starting to pull away a little bit. You... Okay, there we go. Yep, she's got a split all right. Check that out. There goes the umbilical cord. See, that's pulling away. It's almost time. I'm probably going to apply the bigger patch as soon as I'm done with the video. So here we go down here. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Here's the pumpkin down here. This will be one of the fruits that we set. This one here should be open in probably about seven or eight days. And we will set that fruit. And we will put the grandchildren's names in them. Jackson's got two brothers, Ben and Graham, and we will do Ben and Graham. We'll etch that into them when they're like eight days old. So we'll have pumpkins in the end. Hopefully we'll have pumpkins about this big in the end. We'll do one for Macy, one for Ben, one for Graham, and another one for Jack. All right, that's the plan. We're going to donate this plant to the kids, and we're going to make great crosses. I'll go get male pollinators. Each pumpkin will have a great cross. All right, and we still, we got our watermelons. We left them growing. So we can grow out a nice watermelon this year. Two years ago, we grew the biggest watermelon in Michigan, 109 pounds. That's ridiculous. But yes, that was a true story. Jackson has a plaque at home. Largest watermelon grown in Michigan, 109 pounds. So we're gonna grow the watermelons. And I'm gonna put the sheet back on the pumpkin, the white sheet. I talked to Chris Kent. I was debating on whether to have the sheet on or off for maturing the seeds quicker. Chris Kent said, hey, you probably better not to scorch the pumpkin. So I'll put the sheet back on and we're gonna to try to get this to grow another 12 days. So come back and see, but hey, this is all about sulfur. I believe it, I'll blame it on the sulfur. So I did have my soil balanced. When the pumpkin split, we were pretty much back in balanced. We had low magnesium, low sulfur, low copper. I had done things, I was foliar feeding, I was uh, nutrient drenching, magnesium sulfate, 
sulfur, um, is it the sulfates in the magnesium sulfate and bringing it up to par. But I believe this thin wall on the end developed when the pumpkin was marble size. When the pumpkin was marble size, that's when the thickness is developing. That's my theory. Now I could be wrong, but that's developing and you're not gonna thicken it up overnight. It takes time. But now Clint Dyson had the same thing happen. What we're gonna tell you, I'm gonna ask Clint, come back and I'll tell you in the next video, how was Clint, and maybe you can answer here, Clint, if you're watching this video, answer. What levels were your calcium and your boron? Uh, Chris Kent says, the boron, they're saying that the boron, you should be on the high side of the recommended levels, not the low end. Okay, I was at the low end. So could the plant not take in the calcium if I was my boron was higher, which I will have it higher next year. And that's what we're gonna do next year. There's always next year. Next year, I may extend this patch right here another 10 or 15 feet longer and put two plants in here, growing, growing from one end and the other end towards each other. And then if we have this problem happen halfway through, we can rip one plant out and let the other plant grow. So that way I'm not just down to one plant, but I don't have the energy to grow um, like I did in 2014. I had like six plants. In 2014, I grew two Michigan state records, a 1947 and the 1768 was a state record for a week or two. Um, that was a great year. Don't let them tell you anything about the weather. It was about the weather. We grew five Michigan State records in 2014. Don Barron grew two. I grew two. John Harnica grew one. All right, five in one year. It's the weather. The weather's a huge factor. That's why these guys get big cocky egos. They have a good year. And then the next year they crap their plants because they didn't figure, oh, what about the uh, weather? The weather's a huge factor in all of this. And even the weather can cause splits. Big surge of rain comes through you weren't watering uniformly and that's a whole nother video you need to be watering out onto the lawn the roots are under the lawn and that's actually what i did i split this pumpkin i started watering out on the lawn because we were getting drier as soon as i did that and i put down like 180 gallons of water 36 hours later pumpkin split so it was a water watering issue watering issue but the pumpkin was also thin walled but Clint, Clint's had a different theory. Clint Dyson says, hey, it's just that we're growing them so good and so fast, we blow them up. Maybe that's true. Maybe Clint's theory is right. I don't know. What do you think? What are your theories? Please share them below. I'd like to know. What is your theory? And please come back. We're going to grow this to day 40 with the Bubba Patch. Waterproof membrane, contact adhesive. We're going to keep her sealed and keep her growing as long as we can. She grew three inches from yesterday to day in circumference. So she's trucking, she's moving along. All right, all right, I'm, I'm getting kind of long-winded here. Thanks for joining us today. Keep them growing. Please post your comments below. If there are viable seeds in here, I'm sh quite sure there's going to be. I'm gonna share them with some of the commenters and then we're gonna sell the rest on the website. You'll be able to get yourself some 2,560 pound genetics, $175 seed crossed with the wolf, which would probably be next year, a $300 seed. You'll be able to get those genetics for a $30 package of seeds at WorldwideGiantGrowers.com. All right, keep them growing. All right, here's the latest in Bubba Patch technology. Okay, I cut inside, I cut it open top and bottom so it can move, it can flex and stretch. And now what we've got going here is I put on a looser patch with a wrinkle and a fold in it. So as this grows and expands, I can watch how it tightens up. I can watch it tighten up and see if it's starting to stretch. This should buy me at least two days, this patch here, maybe longer. And I will double check, there's a little hole there. I will put a little mini patch or I will caulk that right there so air or bugs can't get in. But I believe that will give me the flex. Come back and see. See, inquiring minds want to know how is the Bubba patch? working. Thank you for joining us on Bubba's Crazy Train. Millions of people learning to grow. Millions of people learning to sow. I'll thank you. I'll thank you very much for joining us today.